I'm going to use Python's SciPy CurveFit in order to be able to fit a model to data points. So this blue line is our model and the red points are going to be the data points and we want to try to get those as close as we can. We're going to use this data file right here. Um, if you'd like to follow along with this, you can come to the course website and this is going to be problem number four or homework number four, problem two. Um, let's go ahead and just import our data. And you can view this if you just select the link. There's our data. Um, but let's just go ahead and import it with pandas. And so I'll just import pandas as PD. And then I'll say X is gonna be my new data frame. And then I'll do read CSV. And I'll just put that link inside the quote. And then let's just look at the first five rows of that. Okay, so here's my data, uh, and I've done with this first action. Let's go down to the next one. Here are some conditional statements in Python. If you need to uh, test, for example, the value of five, we set it equal to five here. And then we had an if statement um, with the colon and our condition right here. And if that's true, then it's going to do this line, execute that line. Um, and then we have an else if, another condition. If it's less than four, then it will uh, execute this line. And this else catches all the other conditions. And so in this case, it'll print greater than four. Okay, so we're gonna need to use a conditional statement in our regression because we have this, um, this step function that we're gonna use to approximate the delay and it's going to be equal to zero when time is less than theta, and it's going to be equal to one when time is greater than or equal to theta. So let's just go ahead and rename some of our variables here just to shorten them a little bit. I'll say time equals x, and then I'll do time in minutes, and I'll just get the values from that. And then similarly, I'll do that with y and do values. Okay, just get the uh, the values from those, shorten it a little bit for what we're going to be doing here. Okay, so I can just say, um, you know, a shortened way to do an if statement, um, s equals and then zero if time, and then I could just put in a time value here. One of those time values is less than uh, theta else uh, we're gonna be equal to 0 0.4. So it's just a one line way of doing it. If I had theta equals 0 0.4, then I could print um, my S function, and that's gonna be equal to zero. And then as I start going up, that equals zero still. And if I do two, still equals zero. If I go to five, okay, so now I've crossed over and now it's 0 0.4. So let's implement this as an uh, if statement. Okay, so if time um, i is less than, okay, theta, then we're going to say that s equals zero, and if not, then s equals one. Okay, so this is a little bit longer form of that same if statement. Okay, let's see, what did I do here if t I have theta. Okay, let me put this in parentheses. And still another error. Oh, I is not defined. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I'll need that for my loop later. Let me just put in the number there. Okay, and I think this also works without the parentheses there. Okay, so here is our if statement, and we've just printed it. Okay, let's do this for all values of s. So I'm just going to need to uh, create a new numpy array, import numpy as np, and let's just create an empty array of same length as t. And so you could do that, or you could do an empty like t. Um, so it gets the length of t and makes an empty vector that's similar to what t is. Okay, um, or we could do uh, n equals length of t. Okay, I'm actually going to need n here. 
um, and just do n values. Okay, and then for i in range n, then we can just cycle through this, and I'll just indent these. And then for each one of the s values, just index it by i, and uh, and also do t. Okay, is a function of i. Okay, now I'm going to have s values that are going to be zeros, and then after it's greater time is greater than theta, then that's going to switch to one. So that's going to tell us how much dead time we have. Um, this value right down here on the right, um, how much further it needs to go before it starts coming up. And uh, we're going to use that in our function to define <coughs> our predicted y values. All right, so let's do, let's define a function. I'm just going to do yp instead of y function. And I'll make that t and tau and theta. So tau and theta are going to be the parameters that we're going to try to estimate to fit to the data. And then I need to, um, <coughs> here I'll just say that um, my, my, my y predicted value, okay, is going to be equal to 5.0. Okay, this is going to be this a function right down here, this, um, this in using the constants I'm, and this equation, I have my s of t, okay? And I'm just going to build this, uh, this function, okay? And this one's going to be negative, and then I have t uh, minus theta, and we'll divide it by tau. Okay, so there's my y value that I'm trying to, uh, and I'll, I'll name this z because it's not y yet. Uh, okay, so there's z, and then what I'll do is I'll put in this s function you now and, and be able to calculate s, okay, for all of those n values. So as theta changes, it's going to change the value of s. And then I will say that uh, I will return um, z times s. Okay, so it's gonna, if it's zero, it's gonna take whatever I predicted here, and it'll become zero, and if I, uh, if it's one, then it'll be this expression. Okay, so let's just go ahead and print, um, you know, yp with a tau of three and a theta of 0 0.2. Okay, uh, let, oh, sorry, let me put the parentheses there. I need my times. Okay, so here's my prediction now. I have zeros coming before, and then it starts coming up um, like you would see there. Okay, so now I have my, my function that I've created that returns for values of tau and theta. It's going to return this uh, blue line, which may not be correct initially because I don't have good, um, you know, optimized values of tau and theta. Okay, now I'm going to use the curve fit function. And uh, the uh, curve fit function is going to accept a uh, function name. And then it's going to be the time and then the measured y values. So let's go ahead and uh, do this. I'm going to just copy this line into here and then update my function name. This is yp for y predicted. I have my time and then this is going to be my measured y value. Okay, let's see, I have an error because I don't have curve fit defined yet. So let me do that. I'm gonna go ahead and just import um, from scipy.optimize, uh, import curve fit. And if I run this now, it should calculate the value of C. Okay, so there are my two parameters, the tau and the uh, theta values. And now what I wanna do is just create a plot to, uh, and uh, create a plot and also uh, calculate the r squared value. Okay, so let's first of all just calculate the uh, what the predicted y is. 
is going to be. Um, I can just say that uh, from this function here, I just need y predicted as a function of t, tau, and theta. Okay, so I could say y uh, optimized equals yp of t, and then I'll put in my two coefficients here that I just determined, c0 and c1. Okay, so there is uh, y optimized, and uh, then let's just um, calculate our r squared value. All right, coming down here, I'm going to put in the measured and the predicted values. And that's just from sklearn metrics. I'm going to import the R2 score. And in this case, I have Y optimized and then Y measured value. And we'll just print that. Okay, so it's a very good fit, 0.999 R squared. And now let's just uh, plot this as well. Okay, so the very final thing, uh, inline, okay, so in Jupyter, in the Google Colab, you don't need this. Um, and I think in some subsequent versions of uh, Jupyter Notebooks, you don't need that either. Okay, um, but we're just going to do that statement to allow us to view plots in the notebook. And I'm going to do matplotlib dot pi plot. I'll import that as uh, plt and then we'll do plt uh, dot plot and let's do our time versus the y value and let's do those as red points. So if I just do this initially I can see these were my uh, data points and then if I want to add the plot of the optimized values I could do a blue line, for example, and there is my fit uh, to the data. Now I could add additional things with this as well. I could add, you know, some labels. And so this is going to be measured, and then this would be predicted. and then include a legend here as well. Okay, and so it shows a legend and then just some other things that are nice. Um, I could put a Y label and also an X label. Okay, so there I've, I've made my uh, plot that shows um, you know how this uh, how this fit is there. If you want to save the figure, um, you know locally, you could do uh, myplot.png, or you could do a JPEG or something like that. Okay, so that would save it locally. If you're not in Jupyter Notebook, don't forget to do the plt.show. If you're using IDLE or some other environment, you can also include that here. It doesn't hurt it, uh, but you just don't need it. Okay, so uh, let's just review what we've done here. Um, we took in the data uh, from the very beginning here. We, we just downloaded it uh, through the read CSV and built a data frame. Um, the next thing we did was you know parse it out, parse out the values uh, into T and Y, just shorten the names and make those NumPy arrays. We needed to use a conditional statement, an if statement in to calculate our s value and uh, we we showed how to do that here um, you know just to get our zeros and ones to get our dead time approximation we defined our function okay and then uh, further down we then did our curve fit once we had our function here's our curve fit okay and then an r squared value as well and a very good fit and you can just see that from the plot as well you can see that there's an excellent fit between the measured and the predicted values